Good night, Alex. You forgot to look under the bed. Of course. Sorry, buddy. Nicholas Marigali is the type of athlete where if you lose to him, it's going to feel like you got hit by a truck. But if you beat him, it's going to feel like you got hit by a truck. When we watch these hyper gritty athletes, it's easy to miss some of the technical things happening. Some of these matches can look like pure chaos, so you don't see the systems at work underneath that chaos. The system that stands out the most to me with Marigali is his collar sleeve. It's one of those systems that he naturally goes to in almost every match. So we're going to break that system down, and then we're also going to talk about some ways to properly defend against it. Now, he plays a lot of variations on this guard, so keep in mind that as we go through different positions, these could all be considered their own individual systems, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to lump them all into one big system. If you're setting up collar sleeve from Marigali's perspective, you need a grip on the sleeve with your right hand, a grip on the collar with your left hand, your left foot is going to be blocking their bicep, and that left foot is really important. Think about how you're going to set up a lot of your passes from the top. If you're setting up a knee cut, you're setting up a leg drag, it's all going to start with that leg. Notice Ali's posture here, and then notice how his left elbow is already inside the guard. To me, this is a really good example of what you should not be doing while you're dealing with collar sleeve. Now, what are some things Ali could have done better here? Number one is his posture. When Mergali's trying to break his shoulders down with that collar grip, he should be counterbalancing this by dropping his butt down. Here's a quick example of Keenan Cornelius doing this with Mergali. Number two is the left elbow. This left elbow should be rotated in as much as possible, and he should be retracting it back towards his knee. If you play the leg lock game, you can think of this in a similar way to clearing your knee line, only it's your elbow line. So as long as your elbow stays outside of their hips, you're in a pretty good position to not get triangled, to not get omoplatted. But if you allow them to pull your whole arm into the guard, now you're going to be doing some damage control to get out. The last thing he needs to deal with is the foot on his bicep. So there's a couple ways he can go about getting this off. One, he can keep that grip he already has and try to loop his elbow over the top of it. But that's a hard one to do if they're following your bicep with the foot. The other option is letting go of the grip you have, pummeling inside, and re-gripping on the top of the shin. If you allow the person to get the foot on your bicep, the only thing preventing the triangle or omoplata is that elbow line that we talked about. In an attempt to avoid the system altogether, we see a lot of his opponents try to pass on their knees, but as long as he has that foot on the bicep, he's able to isolate the arm and still shoot the triangle. Now, Cyborg ends up getting out of that triangle, but he goes right back to passing on his knees. This is where we see Marigali switch his approach and attack the loop choke. Now, you can do the loop choke when the person's standing, but it's much safer when they're on their knees, and let me explain why. Now, there's some advantages and disadvantages to passing on your knees. The advantage would be your base is better and your body's less spread out. So to put it simply, the windows for the person on bottom to attack are much smaller. The disadvantage is that you can't really move fast on your knees. So if you see an opening you want to blitz through, it's one extra step before you can do your move. You have to first get to your feet and then you can blitz. What this means for the person on bottom is that they can more safely let go of that grip they have with their right hand and attack the loop choke without worrying about getting hit in transition. The thing to keep in mind with the loop choke is that you have to commit both hands to it. So if you miss the choke, you're giving up whatever guard you had and you have to regain after. That could be easy to do if the person's on their knees, but if they're standing, you may not have the time to do that. Here's just one more quick example of how aggressive he can be with that loop choke when his opponent is on their knees. Now I could talk all day about grip transitions and timing, but if you want to dive deeper into that, I highly recommend checking out my video on Tai Nong because that's a large part of the focus in that one. Now onto the bread and butter of this video, the deep lasso sweep. So to me, when I think of Marigali, this is the move that pops into my head. This is one of his best transitions, but it's also an easy move to get yourself stuck in a bad position if you don't enter properly. First thing to notice is that Marigali's hips are square. So with this move, it's easy to want to turn your hips towards the direction of the leg that you're weaving through. But if you do that, it's going to be easier for the person on top to set up a leg weave pass. The other thing is the body position of his opponent. So we talked about this earlier. If someone's pulling your shoulders down, it's going to lighten your hips. So to counterbalance that, you need to drop your hips down. So what that means for Mergali is that he has to find a way to get his opponent to stand up before he's going to be able to do the deep lasso sweep. So we see him use a basic scissor sweep just to threaten the base. And then once his opponent stands up to deal with that, that's when we see him enter the deep lasso. I think with this sweep, you don't want to get too greedy on where you go next. It's easy to land in a pretty awkward position off of it. So I would say keep your focus on just maintaining top position rather than trying to get to mount or get to their back off of this. This one's interesting to me because his opponent squats back down after Mergali gets the hook in. So to deal with this, we see him go to an overhook and then he uses his free leg to assist as a butterfly hook. To me, the mechanics of this one are way more like a butterfly sweep than the sweep we've been talking about. But if you're already a butterfly guard player, this could be a really good variation for you. Now for this last clip, I want to jump back to the Cyborg match because a really unique transition happens here. We see Mergali make a mistake on his entry and he allows Cyborg to turn his hips over to the side. Earlier, we talked about how if your opponent turns your hips over to one side, that can be the start of a leg weave for them. So that happens here, but we see Mergali kind of use it to his advantage, right? He allows Cyborg to turn his hips one way, and then he shifts his hips back the other way and uses that momentum to throw Cyborg over. 
he ends up back on the bottom after that. So technically it's not even a sweep, but there's still so much we can learn from that transition right there. If you're still watching, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. As of recording this, we're three weeks into the channel and we just passed a thousand subs. So to me, that's amazing growth. And the faster this channel grows, the more time and effort I can put into it. So if you want to keep that ball rolling, subscribe to the channel and like the videos. It really does help. And I'll see you guys next week.